You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I am Danielle Washington, your host, and if you are new, welcome to the community. Um, We're so happy to have you. It's a loving, great space. Um, I encourage you to check out some of the other podcasts. Make sure that you also follow us online. But if you are a regular and you've been rocking with us for quite some time, we've been doing a couple episodes. I think this is actually, oh my God, this is actually our 20th episode. Episode. I feel like it's like our 20th anniversary. Yes. But if you've been following us and listening to us for a while, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, your comments. I appreciate your love. I appreciate you just showing up and not just for me, but for you to get this information. And today, oh, honey, let me just tell you my conversation with Dante Stevens of CEO Mindset is going to be fire. Listen, when we were talking about mindset, think about someone famous. Just think about anyone famous. I don't know. When I think of people famous, think of like a Wesley Snipe or some, you know, person who did really well and then they crashed and burned. And you're wondering like, what happened? They were doing so well. Or someone you know who has the most amazing talent and just all this just can't seem to get together. Oftentimes, it's not about the skill or because most of us have the skills or the talent. It's about the mindset. And I'm a perfect example of that, not saying like I'm a level some celebrity, but I'm a perfect my I'm a perfect example of that. When I started my business work experiences, I had some pretty bomb like opportunities come up. And my mindset just wasn't right. And it wasn't until I got my mindset right on so many different things were the opportunities I was able to allow myself to partake in those. And so what I love about Dante, because Dante, we met at, um, we met, we were both in a mastermind together and I was just saw something in him. Just like, he just seemed so grounded in some, there was always something there. And I found myself asking him mindset questions. And at this time he was doing something. He was helping people with their home theater systems, but it just didn't seem right. Cause I'm just like, he just seemed to have this sense of knowledge of kind of like what to do. And he was on this beautiful path. And that's why he is the first guy we're having on the show. But he needed to be the person talking about Isaac. He is so brilliant as a motivational speaker, helping entrepreneurs get their minds right. But also, you know, he had his own journey. You know, he realized when he realized that his why did not match with his what, he went on a whole pursuit to create this whole other thing, which is so natural and so beautiful. So I love having him come on here and talking about why mindset's so important and the fact that it's a practice. It's not of, oh, I just read a book and now I'm good. It is a full set practice and how he went about shifting your, his mindset and how you can do so. It's a great conversation. I'm super excited to kind of talk about these things and talk about different toxic mindsets. And he also gives some great book recommendations as well. So make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you grab a pen. You may need to listen to this one twice because I already have listened to it a couple of times because he gave so many different nuggets. On top of that, speaking of nuggets, I wanted to make sure you knew about our masterclass coming up. Oh my God, next week. Coming up Thursday, January 28th, which is a Thursday. And it is getting out of your survival mode now. And again, we've talked about this several times. Our mindset, you can have a survival mode mindset. And that is something that is going to make sure that you always stay in victim mode. It always shows you that you're going to, you know, not achieve what you know you can achieve because your mind isn't right. So let's work on getting out of this now in January. So the rest of 2021, you are truly thriving. So you can set up now. And by the way, that's free. It's a free masterclass. So Make sure to go to hellowellwithdanielle.com and you can sign up for that today. And let's get into this podcast episode with Dante Stevens. Love it. Welcome, Dante, to the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. How are you doing today? I am absolutely great. I'm so glad to be in the room with you. You know, you're actually the first male guest on the show. Really? 
Yeah. You know, I, you know, it's not that I was being intentional about it, but I probably was being intentional about it, but the level of, I, you know, you know, I think of you as a mindset guru, so I couldn't have anyone else on here talking about mindset, but you. So I'm glad that you are here with me today. Man, look, I'm glad just to hear that I'm the first male to get on this show with Hella Well, with Danielle, with the with the guru herself. You talking about me being a mindset guru? Come on, man. The way you show up in this in this wellness space. Come on, man. Look. Man. Okay, it's a love fest for both of us. I adore you. You adore me. And we've been rocking together ever since that one time at the bar where I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and why are you here? Like, how did you get in this group? <laughs> Yeah, man, that was our, um, you know, that was our kickoff moment, man. And I think ever since that moment when we finally like were like, OK, we're in the same circle, we're in the same community around these great people, but we don't know each other. So who are you? Right. And um, just that from there, I mean, I think we kicked it off from there, like energies, our energies we just they just mesh. It was like magnetic. So I, mm-hmm. I love everything that you're doing, man. You oh, man, you've been such a joy in my life for 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 some time now. So thank you again for just having me here in this space with you. Likewise, and being able to talk to you, I started discovering how to open my mindset to so many different things. And it, you changed a lot of my routines and my habits. And so I was just like, I really wanted you to be on this show. So when we start off, you know, why is mindset so important? Uh, mindset is important because mindset controls everything we do. It's, it's a part of who we are. Like it drives our decisions. So why do we do the things we do? Why, why, why are we the way we are? And it's, it's driven by our mindset. So you get to choose how you want to be. You get to choose how you show up. So in the case where you have people who look at a negative situ- situation and they tend to look at that situation like that's the end all be all, then that's a choice that you made. But then you got some people that look at negative situations and say, hey, what can I learn from that? How can I grow from it? You know what I mean? They, they dust it off and keep moving. So your mindset is a big part of how you show up in the world. And people who have a, a, a mindset of always growing and always learning and always going to the next level, those are the people who succeed and those are the people who are successful. You said a couple of different things I wanted to talk about. Um, the first thing you talked about is choice. Mm. Because a lot of people don't think they have a choice. They're like, well, it is what it is. You know, the struggle is this. I mean, life is just this way. I was raised this way. This was what I was born into. How do you go from recognizing that you even have a choice? It's it's about awareness. That's the fir- that's the key to everything. Like, no matter how we choose to look at things, like everything starts with awareness. So when you are aware of yourself in these whether that's self-limited thoughts or your your circumstances, your, your environment, whatever the case may be, you get to choose how you want to move around or move about in, in life or how you want to handle these things. But when, once you are aware of your circumstance, you may not have the money, you may not have the opportunities that somebody else may have, and you can make the choice at that moment to say, hey, I don't have the same opportunity, so I'm not going to do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a choice that you made that I'm not going to. Or you could say, you know what? I may not have the same opportunities as as these people, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. I'm going to change my identity. I'm going to start looking like the person that I want to become. And in order to do that, you make the conscious effort to say, hey, who are the people that I need to be around? Who are the people that I need to be learning from? What are the books I need to be reading? What do I need to do? Because my circumstance tells me something else. It says something else, but my circumstance does not determine who I am and where I'm going. So to your question, it start back with awareness. Just be aware of the way that you think. And you can do that a few different ways. You know, like you talk about it, like stuff like meditation and stuff like doing things that gets you back to who you are at the core and start there. And then once you get to that place, you can start being more aware of these things so you can make more conscious decisions and make better choices. Oh, I love that. And you talked earlier about the, um, you mentioned something about a growth mindset. And, you know, I know a lot of people in the space know about growth versus fixed mindset. Can you actually talk about the difference between? A growth mindset and a fixed mindset? Well, fixed mindset is what 
most people are used to and accustomed to. It's the it's yeah. the <laughs> I was there. I was in. I was like a a car carrying member. I was the president of fixed mindset. Yeah, it, it's just that mindset where you. It, it can be things that you learned while you was growing up. You know, your parents probably taught you certain things. You saw certain things or whatever like that. So, you know, let's just talk like entrepreneurship, right? If you grew up in a house where you had parents who worked a nine to five, and then you never saw you never saw entrepreneurship. So you never had the mindset to think that, hey, I can run a business. So if somebody said, hey, you should run that business, you should do being uh, an entrepreneur or whatever. And you think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'm not whatever. Right. Or if somebody tried to help you, if they say, hey, I can teach you this skill or to get better at this, you can do read this book or do something. And you just feel like, no, I can't do it. I'm not that like you don't want to get out of your own bubble. That's kind of you stuck in your ways. That's the way I look at fixed mindset. You stuck in your ways and you won't do nothing else outside of that. Also, yeah. you can look at it like you we can go back to like your circumstances. You can look at where you are in your life and think that I can never be anything like you can have that type of mindset where you don't even push to do more because you don't think you can have more because you have a fixed mindset. But then when you talk about the people who are really progressing in life, the people with the growth mindset are the people who look at challenges and they face them head on. They look at things differently. They don't think the same way other people do. That's why you could take pe- two people who was born in the same type of circumstance in a bad neighborhood or whatever, and you can get you got one that stays stuck and they stay stuck in the hood and they stay stuck around the same people and they work in the same type of job they're going nowhere in life. But then you have somebody else who said, hey, I don't want that for myself. And they go on to do great things and they become um, multi-million dollar entrepreneurs or run big firms or whatever the case may be, CEOs or whatever companies. It's because they had the mindset to say, hey, my circumstances don't define who I am. So and you got people that's willing to do the work on themselves. That's the key thing about people with growth mindset. They do they do the work that they have to do on themselves. In order for you to become the person that you want to become, you got to be able to do the work. And that's through reading. That's through getting around the right people and all of that good stuff. So um, that's my analysis of the two. No, I love that. And for me, like, I, I feel like, you know, growing up with whatever I did and, you know, I've been reading this book that has been bombed that, it, what is it? Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. Mm. If you haven't read that book, that book is a life-changing book. But one of the things I realized is that most of my life, I had a victim mindset mm. in the sense that, you know, I was the, everything, I could blame the world. Like, you know, I blamed my parents. I blamed, you know, society, you know, as a black woman, it's harder for me. My parents didn't love me enough. You know, oh, I didn't have enough money. I blame, you know, Karen at the job for being Karen at the job. Mm-hmm. You know, just it was all I was the victim. Everything was woe is me. And it was really hard to get out of that mindset. And I know that I did some things to shift my mindset. Like, were you always this way? And if you weren't, what did you do to shift your mindset into a growth mindset? Uh, No, it wouldn't be fair for me to say I've I've always been this way. I think it's something that you have to be more mindful of and you have to learn as you continue to grow. Now, I will say at the core of who I've always been, I've always been a person who loved to learn, who Mm -hmm. loved to take on challenges. So there was always um, specs of my growth mindset, but I did have fixed mindset behavior in certain areas. It just depends on what we're talking about, right? Because you can, you can, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fair to say you can have a growth mindset in certain areas in your life. It's just certain things you may just feel comfortable with. Like, oh yeah, I feel like, you know, I can take, take over the world in this. But in some area, you just feel like, man, I, I got these self-limiting thoughts here. I just can't see it. I can't go there. But for me, I've always been, I'm ambitious. I've always been um, a person that thought for himself. I've always had leadership type qualities. Now, the thing where I struggled with for the longest was really believing in myself and believing that I could achieve all the things that was in my head. Mm. Because I always had these great thoughts. Like the people that know me now, they that 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 you know, like you said, like the mindset guru stuff, like like, yeah, like I, uh, woke up like this, like Beyonce, I woke up like this. But, <laughs> mindset. <laughs> but what's funny, but what's funny is that 
a lot of the things that I think now, I've I, I've always thought these these powerful thoughts, I always thought this way, but the people I was around didn't think like me. So mm. I always thought it was me. I always thought I had a problem. And I always thought that like I didn't I didn't connect with a lot of people. And what I would do was I'll try to play, I'll try to downplay what I really thought and how I really felt. So I felt like I had to play like that impost, like play like I was somebody else for the most part. But what that did was when I was in my silo, it, it hurt because it was like I couldn't really authentically be who I wanted to become. And it took me till I was 35 years old for me to start getting it. I'm 38 years old now. Yeah. Right. And it took me a while to just really say, hey, I got to be got to be cool with Dante like this guy. Because now I start getting around the right people. See, that's where the change came from. Start okay. getting around the right people. And you got people like Danielle coming to you and saying, hey, brother, you dope. And I was thinking to myself the whole time that I was dope. I was just too afraid to act like I was dope. Right. To really, really just shine. But then you get people like Danielle around you and she's like, brother, you got something else in you. And then I'm like, oh, you can see it, too. Oh, so people do like this. So I can be who I want to be. So I think that's where my self-limiting came from and where where I kind of had that fixed mindset of just really allowing myself to shine and flourish like I know I could have. And now that I'm in that space, it's like, oh, man, this is like you're talking about Dante 2.0. Like it's like this is this where I am right now. I'm in I'm in my element right now. Yeah. And I think that's a great point that you bring up because I think a lot of us do have a growth and fixed mindset. Um, I never really thought about that because I'm like, yeah, there was, I, I'm, I've always been curious and I've always been a learner. Like back in the day, I, and, and I'm totally dating myself. I used to love reading encyclopedias just because wow. I could. Like I literally would have library bills with like overdue encyclopedias because I just loved reading them. Um, so I've always loved gr- gr- like learning about things, but I also had that mindset where like, who am I to do these things? Like even starting this podcast, we were talking before we started. Like I, this podcast has been in my head forever. I was just like, well, who am I? Who's going to listen to this? Like, mm. why, why would I do this? I, I think that shows up. It doesn't matter what stage you are in, right? That yeah. Those little voices are going to show up no matter what. I still deal with that to this day. But the thing about it is, is that I'm so on top of who I am that I know when those little voices show up, those voices are not telling me the truth, right? I, I'm able to sit with myself and say, hey, you know what? That's not true. Like, you, I'm like, I deserve to be here too. I deserve to yeah. have this type of life. I deserve to live a life of abundance. Although I can't see clearly how I'm going to get there, that's the beauty of it. It's the journey that you're on, right? But you know that you're focused on the right thing. You know you're going in the right direction. You have to trust your inner your your, your inner self. Like you're you you know it's just like you got that. Um, that like, let's talk about fear, right? You know, when you're fearful of something, but when you're fearful of something of knowing that like, Hey, if I start this podcast, your fear is more around, like, what are people going to think? Or, you know, who's going to listen? Or, you know, maybe it's imposter syndrome. Who am I to talk to anybody about wellness or business or whatever like that? What have I done in my, see, it's you beating up yourself, right? You beat yourself up so bad about the things that you think you're not worthy of doing, but then somebody else on the other end looking at you like you're a hero. And they're like, man, you're so awesome. You changed my life and all that. But you don't even look at yourself in the same way. So it's all about being aware of yourself and getting yourself out of that, getting out of that state and being able to face it head on and say, hey, no, I'm not going to believe that. That's not, you know, that's not who I am. And being able to put mechanism in, mechanisms in place to be able to overcome those thoughts when they come. Because you got to interrupt those patterns as quick as possible. Get to the facts, get to the truth, and get moving on whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Because you got a bigger purpose in life. And if you let that little voice in your head stop you, that little bully in your head is going to keep you from getting to the abundance that you're supposed to have in your life. So you got to get really clear about that and get yourself to a place where you understand when those things happen, you got to be able to move away from it pretty quickly. I love that. And so the way I call it, it may not resonate with you as a guy, but I call that inner voice, the inner mean girl. Mm. Have you seen the movie Mean Girl? No, I haven't seen seen that. that, I haven't seen that one. (laughs) 
So most women have seen the movie, but so I, I recommend seeing the movie and then you'll understand what I mean by the inner mean girl. But you talked about setting up mechanisms in your life to overcome the negative self-talk. What are some tips that you could recommend? Um, I'm, I'm a habitual guy. So I just think, you know, your, your habits drives your, your, your behavior, right? So you got to make sure you put in the right habits in your life to be able to support this person you're about to be or who you're about to become. Because you have to understand when you change in life, the way you used to think really don't ch- like you can always go back to your old way of thinking. You can always go back to the old way of doing things. So you have to work on you continuously. You never take a day off of working on yourself. So what I say is you have to build healthy habits in your life. So you can do anything. Like for me, it's about discipline. So can you discipline yourself to do some things that's tough, that's going to really, really get your mind in a state where anytime uh, that the inner mean girl, as you call, like anytime that little person comes in your head and try to tell you something different, can you have something to combat that? Right. And the way you do that is by making sure your mind state, making sure you in a really, really good place at all times. You're not going to always feel your best, but you have to know how to get yourself out of these states. So I talk to people. So when, when I'm coaching clients, I tell them, like, you have to put in like pattern interrupts. So one of the things that I love to do, and this is one one thing me and you talked about um, one day when we connect, I love to take cold showers, right? And the reason why I take cold showers, it helps me interrupt that negative pattern that I have in my day, right? So let's just say right now, if I'm not having a great day today, I'm feeling down on myself, sales not going the way I need to go, my family not acting right, whatever the case may be, I may just go take another shower and I'll take a cold shower. And what that does is, is it interrupts my the, what's going on internally with me it's too cold for me to be mad or, or to be, no that's right <laughs> whatever you gotta focus now on the moment that's what i love about cold showers it allows you to focus on the moment and in that moment i decided to make a conscious decision that i was going to take a cold shower nobody who's depressed sad or whatever is going to go take a cold shower but you gotta because you're just gonna take a hot shower when you get out and you still feel the same way you take mm. a cold shower, it changes your whole dynamics. It forces you to think about something else. I ain't got time to be thinking about what I was mad about. Now I'm thinking about, hey, this water is cold. So I get to choose <laughs> to think about something different right now. And then you think about, why am I even here? Why am I doing this? Right. Then you start getting to a bigger purpose. I'm here because I'm trying to change how I'm feeling. I don't like how I was before I stepped into this shower. I want to show up differently. Right. And then you think about the people around you you want to show up for. I want to be I don't want to bring this negative negative energy to my wife or to my husband or to my kids or back into my organization. See, this is taking a conscious effort. So these habits, these are some of the habits that I built. So taking stuff, doing things like taking a cold shower, getting up early in the morning is a very, very good habit habit. I get up at 4 a.m. in the morning. And it was a discipline that I had to learn because I started getting to the mind frame of like, okay, there's an option here. I can get up at 4 a.m. in the morning or like it it was like my only option was either I can get up at 4 a.m. in the morning or I like I I may not even have. I'm trying to see how I want to work this because it was something that I if I don't get up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Right. My only other option is I couldn't have got up at all. Like it could have been a, a situation where I, I like God wouldn't even like I, it's a prize for me to get up. When I open my eyes up before, I ain't sitting up thinking, oh, man, I need to lay around, go to sleep a little longer and all that. No, it's not an option for me. I'm getting up at 4 a.m. Or, or nothing like there's no other option for me. Because Wait, I like to describe that is. I get to do something versus I have to get up at 4 a.m. or, you know, it's a chore. It's I get to, I, you know, it's a blessing. I, oh my God, I get to do this. There you go. I love the way you put it. I love it. Cause that's, that's how I was thinking about it. So when you get up and you're like, man, I really don't want, but you got to think the other alternative alternative was you, you couldn't have gotten up at all. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, this is a blessing. I open my eyes again. I'm here to live another day. Man, that's a blessing within itself. And then I get to get my day started early. I get to meditate. I get to pray. I get to have time with myself before I go out into the world so that I make sure that I'm 100 percent 
and ready to tackle whatever challenges come my way. You talk about spending time with yourself because I'm a strong believer in stillness and especially in the morning before I do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about this. And so I've actually created an ebook on morning and evening routines because I think they're so important. But I feel like how you start your day is so key. And for me, starting my day with myself, not starting my day with rolling over and looking at what's going on on social media, what's going on with my business, but starting my day in stillness with me and my guide, source, whatever you want to call it. Like, like, why do you do that for you? And what has that been for you, having that moment of stillness and time for you? Man, that has been the number one game changer in my life when I start implementing that. Um, because um, I, I've, I'm an entrepreneur and I've been an entrepreneur for over 10 years. Um, and I just, I was getting pulled on in every which and way, like between yeah. family, business, I just, I got to a point where I didn't like me anymore. I, I didn't like the way I was showing up in the world. I didn't like how I was feeling internally. People on the outside world, they'll look at you and think, oh man, he got it all. He's, he's great. He got a beautiful family, he making money, he doing all this. But internally, I just wasn't that guy. I wasn't happy. And I can see how mental health is a big deal for a lot of people um, because you're putting on a facade most of the time, right? You're not really operating the way you feel on the inside. So I went on a, um, on a, on a quest, on a journey to figure out like, how can I get better? How can I make myself feel as good as I, uh, as I, I want to feel as good on the inside as I was on the outside. Right. Cause I can put on clothes. I can dress up. I can clean up and look good on the outside. Right. But on the inside, I was like the ugliest person in the world. And I was mm-hmm. like, I want to reverse this. I want to feel better on the inside because I know if I look, if I feel good on the inside, how it's going to show up on the outside. I'm just going to I'm just going to shine bright on the outside. Um, so I went then. So then I went from there looking at other people that I follow. I was like, what are other successful people doing? Because I am not. I know I'm not the only person that struggled with this. So I started looking up what other successful people were doing. And I started finding the common thread. People, they, they, they're meditating. They're reading. You know, they're um, they, 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 um, they journaling. They doing all of these different things. But the main, the first thing I started was meditation. And when I started meditation, that was the absolute biggest thing that happened for me. I, I just started off ten minutes a day, just sit quiet, and it was tough in the beginning, trying to, trying to silence your thoughts, trying to just be still. But I stuck with it. I kept doing it each and every day because I knew how important. It was for me to do it in my life because I didn't like the way I was showing up. And as I continued to get consistent with it, I started noticing things started changing in my life. I started being more patient. I started being more aware. I started understanding me more. I started being way more introspective than I ever have been, right? And it was like a game changer. And once I started seeing how I was you know, showing up with my wife and my kids and how I was able to make better business decisions, it was one of those things like I was afraid not to do it. And I think I've been doing meditation for, what, three years, two, three years now. And I've been doing them every day since then. Like, I meditate every day. And it is a big deal. Like, I'm afraid not to do it because I know that I'm not going to show up the way I want to show up if I don't do it. So I make sure that's my habit every day I get up. And I love that because for me, meditation has been kind of very similar and I don't know if I started meditating after you or before you. I mean, I did it before, but, you know, I eventually became actually certified in meditation, being able to guide people through meditations. Mm. Um, and I do agree. There's times when I don't meditate in the morning, I'm like, mm, this day don't even feel right. Mm. And when I do, I'm powerful. I'm twirling around. Like there's just a groundedness that I found when I meditate. I really need to do a podcast on meditation because it has been such a game changer for me as well. So you talk about meditation. You talked about stillness. Um, you talked about what are other game changers that have been for you in terms of mindset? Because mindset truly, as you mentioned, is a practice. It's not something that you just wake up and it's like, if you don't do it, you're just there. But it truly is a practice and a habit that you have to create. The biggest thing for me, I do a few, I do a few things, but I think learning to train yourself to do hard things is a real mindset piece that shows up in everything you do in life. So let's just say one thing. I never liked running growing up, right? But I taught myself how to run and to be a runner. Because what I like about running is that it allows you to push past those barriers and those things that want to tell you to stop 
Like when you feel it in your gut, you feel it in your leg. You feel, Now you got your mind playing with you and you want to stop. You want to quit. But I picked up the habit of running and I put it inside of my routine. And I make myself run on certain days, basically same location. And I may change the, you know, I never go down. I only go up. So I may increase my run time. But the mm-hmm. increase in the run time is all about seeing if I can push myself to go further or to go harder. Or when my mind starts telling me to give up and quit, and then I remind myself, why am I doing it in the first place? Because I equate that to how life shapes out. Like, what's going to happen is, like, th- this is one of the things I realized. Like, you can run two days in a row. You can go out one day and run three three miles, and it feel like, oh, man, it was the easiest my, uh, run ever. And you can go out on day two and try to get three. And things like, man, by the time you get two miles, you're like, oh, man, I'm I'm tired. I'm done. You know, that's just how life is, right? Life's going to throw you challenges. Things just not always going to line up perfectly for you. But can you push yourself through the times where you know you can do three miles? You've done it before. So there's no question that you can do it. If you can do it or not, it's like now the question becomes, am I going to push myself and, 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 and will myself through it no matter what? And I took that same concept. And I run it into every aspect of my life. So if something with me and my wife not going the way it should be in, in my marriage or whatever like that, that I pull from that, right? Mm-hmm. I pull from the, the experiences that I put myself. See, those experiences I put myself in. I, I, I put myself into an experience like with running or doing something rigorous and hard and seeing if I can pull myself through it. Because the things that I can't control is stuff like that happens like with my wife or if I'm in traffic and somebody cut me off and I want to get mad or a deal don't go through or whatever. The, a, a lot of those are the uncontrollables. So yeah. if I can put myself in positions where I put myself when I put myself in a situation where I got to push through some hard stuff and I'm consciously doing that just to see if I can push myself through it. And how will I handle that from a mental from a mindset standpoint, then I know what happens when I get into a situation where I can't control it. It happens, but now I go back to my foundation because I've done things harder than that already. Yeah. So that's kind of like my tool um, that I use. And then that's another way for you to be able to discipline yourself because that's what you, you want to gain mental discipline. You want to know like, hey, if I'm taken to this point, can I really push through? Because mental health is real. And if you let these little thoughts and these little things come in your mind, that's why a lot of people don't uh, are not here with us today, because they don't know how to govern those things that's going on in their head. They're not pushing themselves through some harder stuff so that when hard things do happen, they do have a barrier or some type of foundation that can help them through it. Um, But I absolutely love running anything with working out. I love it because it allows me to push myself past my threshold, push me past the place of comfortability because I don't like to be comfortable. I like to sit on that edge because that lets me know everything else is going to be small compared to what I'm pushing myself through right now. And having a foundation is so key. Um, One of the things you talked about is, you know, making sure like pushing yourself to being harder and working through that. But I think the foundation of even that, which I call like the bumpers on, like if you have like, I love analogies, like think about bowling and like when they put the bumpers on, so you know, you're never going to get a gutter ball Mm. um, because I am that gutter ball girl. Um, So if you're not playing bowling anytime soon, but you know, knowing your why, Mm. knowing your why behind, why am I running? Mm. Why am I, you know, focusing on eating well? Why am I focusing on my mindset? Knowing your why behind that really helps like strengthen that core and that root of that foundation. I find that to be so, so important to me. That's, that's big. The why is the big, if you, <clears throat> if you don't have a why, you're not going to push through anything. You're not yeah. going to do anything. You're going to give up, like, all, like not having a why is like not having hope, right? Yeah. Your why give, your why feeds the hope. It is your hope. <laughs> it is your hope, right? And I remember, like, even, like I said, like, I'll do these runs and I'll push myself, like, just to be, uh, just to add some context to it, I started out running at 10, like, 10 minute uh, runs, right? 10 minutes, get you about a mile on a treadmill. That's how I started. I started from there, just being consistent with running 10 minutes and got 10 minutes up to at least, I, I think I've done up to eight miles now, right? Yeah. 
And just to get that took work to progress to get the eight miles. But sometimes like trying to get the eight miles, it was it was a lot on my mental. Right. It was me wanting to give up at, at four miles. It was me wanting to give up at five miles. But what kept me in the fight was like, why am I doing this? Because if I couldn't put nothing bigger out in front of me, if I didn't have anything I was chasing, anything that I was going after, who I was doing this for, what I was doing this for, I would have stopped. I would have like, man, ain't no point of me doing this. Ain't like, Mm -hmm. I ain't trying. I don't care. I ain't trying to lose weight or whatever the case may be. But when I think about my wife, when I think about my kids, when I think about the 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 stages that I'll be on, speaking to people, inspiring and motivating them helping them go to the next level in their lives. When I think about my team and the people who depends on me, that's why I do that run. See, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. See, when you realize things are bigger than you, that's when the whole world opens up. But everything, if everything just depends on you, like if everything's centered around you and it's, and it's only you that you're thinking about, you have no, like that doesn't give you enough incentive, incentive to go after the dude to go do anything greater that's bigger than you. So when you make it bigger than you, it changes the whole scope. And that's how it was for me. I just, I, I push myself to do those things because I know it's bigger than me. And I know it's somebody on the other end, somebody on this podcast, it's somebody going to be sitting there listening and thinking like, man, I've been really, really want, wanting to do bigger and greater things. But in yeah. order for you to be able to do bigger and greater things, you have to start working on you. You have to put yourself in those that you have to build your 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 uh you you have to change your identity and build yourself up into this person that you want to become. So in order for me to be this thought leader, to be this mindset coach and all, you know what I had to do? I had to do the stuff that people did not see. I had to start getting up early. I had to start doing a lot of work on myself. Going, up. I'm running at five thirty in the morning. By five thirty, I'm already running. I'm three miles, four miles, five miles. I'm running while everybody sleep. And I remind myself of that. Why everybody sleep, trying to get that extra hour, whatever they're getting, I'm at it right now because I'm doing this for the people that I'm I'm called to serve. You just don't wake up and be great. You work on being great every day. Yeah. And you're not going to be great every day, but you work on being great every day because it's just the small incremental things you have to do day in and day out that's going to contribute to your overall goal and vision. Yeah. And that's why I created my coaching program, The Air Journey, which is, you know, it's an acronym. So it's awakened to the root of your thoughts and your patterns until you know where you are and where you want to be. And then we talked about interrupting the patterns that no longer serve you. So then you could redefine what wellness means to you and redefine what living well means to you. And I think that's so important that we, again, you need to have that foundation and that why is so key to all of that. Oh, yeah. What was I going to say to you? Oh, sorry. Mindset moment. <laughs> I know that you're also an avid reader. I think you read probably between you and uh, Lamar Tyler of Traffic, Sales, and Profit. Shout out to him. My I God. think you guys read more books than I've ever known anyone else to read. <laughs> <laughs> what are three books that you would recommend that people can read right now to really help shift their mindset? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Oh, man. For a regular person who doesn't read, that'd be like, oh, I got you. But you, of well, course, it's tough. Because you, you made it specific if you want to change your mindset, right? Or just mindset in general. But you, know what? but you know what? Reading is a mindset. Like, oh, you God, know, yeah. before we even, even get into the books itself, just taking on that habit of reading, that, that's a mindset within itself. That's mm-hmm. a, that, that, that contributes to your personal growth. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't start reading until 2017. Oh, wow. I started okay. reading the 20. I taught myself to like, I know it sounds funny being a grown man. I'm 38 now. So that was around 35 when I started like really, really taking reading seriously. But I literally had to teach myself how to read. Like not how to read. Like how to read. read. But I had to <laughs> teach myself to want to read, yes. to 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 want to to enjoy reading, right? Because even if I if even when I say how to read, it's a thing where like when I grew up, Nobody really taught me how to learn. Like, you know, I always been an avid learner and I always learned by like seeing people do stuff. And I was mm-hmm. always curious. But when I read books, I never retained what was in the book. So I never saw the point of reading. So I was a African-American boy growing up, not really reading stuff. I was learning stuff. I've always been fairly smart 
because I can learn stuff. But when it came down to books, I wouldn't pick up a book and read. And I remember even getting married. My wife tried to give me a couple books and I wouldn't read them. I'm just like, even though it was on somebody that I like, like I was into music. So she got me a book on Kanye West. I was into uh, Mike Vick when he was playing football and uh, he had a story. She got me his book. I still got that book and never read it because yeah. I just had this. That, let's go back to fixed mindset. I had this fixed mindset, this self-limiting thought about around about how um, what reading like I had this stigma around reading. I was like, I, I don't know. What's the point of me reading? I, I ain't going to remember that no way. But it was just because when I was growing up, nobody, nobody taught me how to read. No, mm -hmm. no teacher, you know, and I talked to my wife about it because she's a school teacher and I love the way she teach because I talked to her about these type of things. Like nobody's really teaching these kids how to learn, how to read, how to harness their brain. Right. And it took me to get to where I was 35. Actually, you talk about Lamar Tyler. Shout out to him. Uh, my mentor, both our mentors. The first book he gave with me uh, gave me with Profit First. And I was dealing with some stuff in my business. Such a good book. <laughs> For sure. I was dealing with some stuff in my business around the finance and he gave me that book. That was the first book I read from front to the end. First book I actually retained something from. Yeah. And by reading that one book, it sparked something for me. And it said, hey, you know what? This is like, I'm, I learned some stuff about business. I learned like some stuff that I need to be implementing business wise. But then I also realized when I was doing my research, a lot of successful people read. And I'm mm -hmm. seeing people like Lamar Tyler and I'm seeing these people out here that's really progressing in life. And I'm like, hey, first of all, success leaves clues, right? If they are reading and they're reading a lot of books, like I need to be on the same train as these people. So that's my story around reading books. Just just to say for anybody who's out there, I know, you know, most people who listen to your podcast, I'm thinking they read. But if you got, you know, especially for males, we're not teaching them to read. We're not we're, we're not making reading cool. And that's one and that's for all, especially in the African American community. I don't think reading is deemed as cool, but it, it is a game changer. I believe not just in for business, but just for your life itself and growth. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, and I want to make, and, and I think, and, and I think reading is cool. I think reading is the coolest thing you can do. We just got to change the narrative around it. We mm -hmm. got to start getting people like, hey, because if you want to be great, that's why. I, post a lot of books that I read. That's why I show up in the space of like, hey, he's a reader. I want people to think I've been reading my whole my whole life. So I can just go back and tell you, hey, you know what? I started reading in 2017. I started reading three years ago. And I learned the habit. And I read every day now. I literally read seven days a week for 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes a day. I feel like this. How can you tell your kids to read for 20 and 30 minutes a day and you don't do it? Mm. That's how you know how the parents are doing that, though. Yep. So I, I hate if they hit somebody, but I can't tell my kids to do it <laughs> if I'm not going to do it. And I do it every day. It's a part of my routine. I have a full routine. I do seven days a week, no matter what. My day cannot start, start until I do my routine. And reading for 30 minutes is one of those things. But going to your original question, you wanted a few books because I know people love books and they want to read. The first book that comes to mind when we talk about mindset is the book called Mindset by mm -hmm. uh, Carol, what's her name? Carol uh, S. Dweck. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's that's the name. I'm going to try it and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, so that would be the first one I would say um, that specifically around mindset. I like the book Extreme Ownership. Okay, I've never heard of that one. That one's by Jacko, Jocko, uh, Jocko Willink. Yeah, just look up on Extreme Ownership. That book is big because it talks a lot about like the military, it's talk about the mindset these people have to have, like when they're in war and stuff like that, and show you how that applies to business. So if you're in business, that'll be awesome for you. But it allows you to see how your mindset have to be different to be able to run like leadership and be uh, to be a leader and stuff like that. So I would say that one would be a good one for mindset. And what would be my third book? Oh, you hit me with a tough one. You know what? I love how he's like literally looking through his bookshelf. So if you sounds like he's like looking through something, he's literally looking through his bookshelf right now. You know what? I'm going to go with the one I just finished reading. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, it's by Victor E. Frankel. Okay. This book is based on, this is a uh, concentration camp survivor. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot by us. A lot. A lot by us. And this guy kind of, you know, he, he tells his story about him being in a camp. And you know, 
like this is probably the worst thing somebody could ever go through. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of talks about the mindset you have to have to go through that. And it gives you a different perspective on life. I think that is a really, really good book to read. But there's so many different there, there are so many things you can get from reading different books, because I feel like any book you read, especially if it's in the self-help, personal development, whatever, it's going to help you in terms of your mindset. One extra book I will say, too, as a bonus, uh, Limitless by mm-hmm. um Jim Jim Quick. Now he helps with your brain helping you understand how your brain works cuz it's really important for you to understand how your brain works. That's one of the things that I love like the brain. Like I wish I had more friends that just like that dealt with brains and just could tell me all the because I I <laughs> I really be trying to figure out like how do my brain work? Like yeah. why do I do what I do like you know, even when it comes down to like organization and stuff, like I'm not the most organized person, but I be trying to think like, how can I be more organized? How can I do things in, a, in such a way? Like I was telling you earlier, like when we talk about journaling, right? I love journaling, but I got a bunch of books with stuff in it, but I never go back and read none of the stuff. I don't like I write stuff in any place just because I'm trying to write it and get it out. But I have no organization around what I do. It's just like, I just want to write and it feels good when I write. But I'm like, I think I should be reading some of this stuff or coming back to it. But I have no organization around it. And sometimes if you want to like, how can I get my brain to like, how can I find that right mix that just flows naturally with the way my brain is wired? So yeah, I think we are so much alike because like, you know, again, growing up as a kid, I always wanted to understand why people think and do what they do. And I think that's what's led me on this journey. Like even when I was in college. All of my electives were in sociology and psychology. And as a kid, when I wasn't reading psychology, when I wasn't reading encyclopedia, I was reading psychology books, wow. which and Danielle Still books and Joan was like not Joan Rivers, Joan something. Some books I shouldn't have been reading. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I have been a reader. But what's crazy is I think like the person that I am now, like I never thought about that growing up. But the person I am now, I think I would have got into some type of psychology. Mm-hmm. Oh God, you would have been amazing. Of, Never too late. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm. Yeah, I don't think I want to go now. I, I think I can. I think I can do it now as a coach as much as possible, yeah. and just share my experiences. My whole goal in life now is to be able to give people like real life experience, coach them, mentor them, help them go to the next level in their life, their business, or whatever they're doing. Um, but just using my own experiences. But if I could do, if I did anything over and I had like went to school and stuff like, I think I would have got into that space because I'm so fascinated with like things like the brain and like how we behave and how we do things. I love habits. Like I've always been habitual. Like I think I've always been, I just wasn't aware of it. Right. Yeah. And now I'm just way more aware. So how can people reach you to deep dive further with you and just be able to follow you? The the place where I live the most is on Facebook. So, you know, you can look me up, Dante Stevens on Facebook, D-A-N-T-E-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. Um, I have a private Facebook group you can join. It's called Transform Your Business Like a CEO. Um, the name of my company is CEO Mindset LLC. And that's what I do. I help people just not become CEOs in their business, but help them become CEOs of their life. Because I feel like if you can become a CEO of your life and you can run your life in a way where it's strategic and it's purposeful, those habits that you build on your personal life will trickle over into your business. So I like to play with the whole. I like the whole. I want you to bring part of yourself to me. Don't just bring your business struggles to me. Bring me your struggles so we can get through the, the crap that you're trying to cover up so we can get to the real meat. So you can really, really shine and go to the level you were supposed to go to in your life. So, yeah. So Facebook, you can follow me there. Um, like I said, transform your business like a CEO um, private group and then the CEO mindset LLC Facebook page. I'm also there as well. Um, I'm on Instagram as well, but I don't live there as much. Facebook is kind of like my home. Yeah. And for me, mindset was the difference of my business. Like it made a difference once I started shifting my mindset. So I do, I love what you're doing because I think that will help so many business people, entrepreneurs. Um, At the end of every show, I always ask four questions, like quick fire questions. So whatever comes to mind first, you know, just oh. give me your answer. Don't worry. I'm not asking for your social security number or anything like that. <laughs> so the first question is, how do you define living hello well? Being 
the most authentic, you being the most authentic you can be, being your most authentic self, right? Just getting up, making sure you're set and you're ready to go. Like just being happy with you. Love that. Aisle or window? Window. What's always in your travel bag? Toothpaste. <laughs> thank That's you. It, first thing. <laughs> <laughs> for, for everyone around you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You said it first thing. <laughs> That's fine. If it's in your bag, it's in your bag. I appreciate toothpastes in your bag. <laughs> and so part of what I'm doing and what I've been working on is creating this wellness revolution for women of color. But it's, you know, there's a wellness revolution for people of color in general. What advice would you give yourself or your daughter who, you know, is going through life and needing to l- live life a better when I think about my daughters, you got to take care of you. Take care of yourself the best way you can. That means not just, you know, internally, like pick up some good habits. For my daughters, it was important for them to wake up, make up your bed. Like just do the, do the small things you need to do to build on to the bigger, to your bigger goal and vision. Like, so I want you to take on some really good habits and then I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to believe that you can do anything that you want to do in life. And I try to be an example. Me and my wife try to be an example to both of our daughters. And like, like even with me, I'm, I left a business and started out on a whole new journey. And my kids are able to witness this. And I want them to be able to play at a very, very high level. Don't, don't, don't hold, like, don't hold nothing back. Be who you want to become in life continue to grow and understand the way you get there is by doing the work on yourself because when you're better, everything goes around you is better. And that was a word. Thank you so much, Dante, for being on the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I'm so grateful for you to be our, like I said, you you had to be the first male. Oh. You just had to be the first male. So thank you for being on here. I got to get that so I can put in like my talks and stuff. Say, hey, I was the first male to be on Dan- <laughs> Hello Well with Danielle. You know what I mean? Like y'all ain't got this type of status right here, <laughs> You are hilarious. Again, everyone, thank you for being here. Make sure to follow Dante. Um, He's just a brilliant breath of fresh air and just I adore his mindset and it's just a wealth of just information. So again, thank you for being here and I will check you guys out next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello well Danny on Twitter. And if you like hella, hella, hella love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.